Hi all. I am um, going to show you a project that I made years ago at a at a conference. Uh, I was feeling really antsy, so I started crocheting during the seminars, and it really helped a lot to help me focus. I don't know. Do you do that? Do you crochet or knit so that you can focus a little better? Um, anyway. These are little water bottle covers. They were giving out free bottles of water at the conference and I was just having trouble managing them uh, and my you know, papers and things that I was getting as handouts. But um, I have a uh, just a little metal water bottle, reusable water bottle that I've got here. And um, I just, I think I used sock yarn that I didn't know what to do with. It was just brightly colored and fun. And uh, I, uh, I put a carabiner on one loop and just slide it through and you can hang it on your backpack or your purse. Um, it is nice because it does manage the, um, the, uh, the sweating. Um, you don't get water everywhere, it just stays in the fabric of the, uh, the water bottle sock. I'm going to use some cotton yarn, but I think, I think this is like a, a wool. Uh, nylon blend, but it's been, I don't know, six years since I, I made those. And um, they actually hang on my coffee station because I have little coffee travel mugs that I pop these in. And that way you can carry them either by the handles or the, you can clip it on and you don't have to touch the hot, um, uh, hot coffee travel mug. Sometimes they do transfer heat. Uh, but I've noticed that more, more, more than anything else, that they sweat, and so you end up getting a, uh, you know, getting a, uh, a condensation shower on yourself or things that you're carrying with it. So anyway, it looks like I I made a quite a large hole in the previous. Um, incarnation. This hole I think is a little big. So I'm going to do something a little more updated for my uh, style now. So I'm going to do four chains. Yeah, four chains. And then um, just slip stitch into the first, the first chain. All the way through. Now you can do double crochets or single crochets. And I'm doing stacked single crochets. I'm going to do three. And that means I need to do trebles. So if you need to um, learn about stacked single crochets, I will link that below in the description box. Otherwise, you can just do chains. If you're doing a single crochet, you chain one. If you're doing a double crochet, you chain two or three, depending on how tight your chains are. And trebles are three or four. And I've already reduced myself down to double crochets. I have to remember trebles. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do 11 treble crochets into this circle, and I'll meet you back. So that will, if you include your starting stitch, however you made it, that makes 12. I'll meet you back. Okay, I'm back. I apologize, there's street work going on outside of my, uh, my door, my window here. I'm just going to slip stitch onto that first stacked treble, stacked stack single crochets. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and that's 12 right there. So I like to flip it. Um, 
You may or may not want to do that, but that's what I do. It's just a habit. And so I am doing my treble stack single crochets. Okay, we're going to do the four chains or whatever it is that you prefer. I do two, two chains on top of it. Okay, and then do a treble in the next stitch. Two chains and a treble into the next stitch. This is going to make kind of a lacy fabric. If you want it to be more uniform, uh, I would do double crochets and one chain. So you could have done 12 double crochets in here and then a double crochet and one chain to separate. But since I'm doing trebles, I want to do two chains to separate. That's two. It has to be the nicest day, so I, all my windows are open to get some fresh air in the house, and they would be working on my street today, and they've been there since before 7 a.m. They're just digging up the street. I'm sure they enjoy the cool weather. It's been so ungodly hot the past couple days. Code orange. Air quality. At least we're not in Florida where they're not allowed to take water breaks. Okay, so I usually count the spaces, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and this will be 12. And I'm just going to do a slip stitch. Okay. Turn your work, and you can, you know, kind of measure the bottom of the bottle. It doesn't have to be exact. Now you can go into the space and just do a slip stitch. And I'm going to do four chains, one, two, three, four, and then do a single crochet. One, two, three, four, and a single crochet into the space. So 
So this is going to be more of a lacy doily look than the straight single crochets and double crochets. Um, I'm just on a kind of a lacy doily kick lately. I'll meet you back when you get this all the way around. We get these four chain loops added in. So I've uh, made my double crochet stacked. It's actually a sing single crochet, stacked single crochets up to the level of a double crochet. Now I'm going to put in two more double crochets into that first loop. And I'm calling the four chain spaces from the previous low a loop because Four chain space is too much to say every time. So anyway, this was count counts as three double crochets. Go ahead and put in two chains and then put in three more double crochets. So that's a split shell, very fancy. Go ahead and single crochet into the next loop. Do another split shell, which is three double crochets, two chains, three double crochets. And just be careful that you don't count this loop as part of your your three double crochets because you'll end up shorting yourself. So now we have two chains and three double crochets. Okay, you got your three double crochets, single crochet into the next loop. So now it looks kind of like one, two, three, four on either side, one, two, three, four, but actually it's just the three. Okay, so I'm going to continue with these split shells all the way around. And if it starts to get a little tight in your loop, just push back the stitches a little bit. Just pull them back a little, and that'll give you space for your next stitch. Okay, so I'll meet you back. Okay, my last single crochet into that loop. I want to slip stitch into the top of the first stitch whether that was a chain three or two. So here's our finished piece. Okay, it has a little bit of a curve to it. Just a little bit. But it will stretch over the bottom. Turn our work, and we slip stitch into that center. Try not to split the yarn right there in that single crochet between the two shells. Now we can do two chains, or we can. Stack single crochets one upon the other like that, and then do a double crochet, do three double crochets into the top of the split shells. Do two chains 
and then three double crochets. Double crochet into the top of the single crochet between the two shells in the bottom row and then do three double crochets two double two two chains three more double crochets and then a double crochet down into this single crochet between the two two split shells. So you're doing split shells on top of split shells and you're using a double crochet to anchor down between the two shells in the previous row. So it's the same same uh, same row as this row here, except you have the double crochet. All right, continue to do that and I'll meet you back. Okay, so I've finished the last shell and I'm up here at the top of my stack single crochets right here. And you're done. Um, turn your work. And just go back into the same stitch that you were working in and either chain three or two I'm going to do my two stacked single crochets and then you make your shell your split shells again and you're going to continue to do this until you get as tall as you want this to be You want to make it nice and sturdy, and I like to cl like cover the top of my prod um, my uh, b bottles so that they can't slip out, like they're they're in there securely. This is the same stitch. We're just going to keep doing it row after row. Okay, that's the pattern. I'll meet you back when I have it as tall as I like it. Okay. So we are at, I think, the end of the body. I'm going to create a, a little handle. And how I'm going to do that is I think I'm just going to slip stitch up the side till I get to a point. skip that stitch. Okay, I'm going to do a single crochet and I'm just going to chain over this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think that should be plenty. Six stitches. We can turn our work and we can do single crochets around. That was six.
One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Eight. I'm just going to go back into the hole here and do nine stitches. Turn your work. So go into the same stitch. Okay, baby. Okay. <laughs> You're such a loud kitty. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Okay, so the bottom here, this is the wrong side out. So let's go ahead and turn it the right side out and you'll see the bottom has like a little bit of a ridge I think it looks nicer okay so then we can just go back and forth with single crochets to make a strap that goes from here to here or we can make uh, make it lacy um, it depends on what you want to do um, you could also do like a Tunisian uh, stitch because that's very flat but um, uh, thin. So how you can start a Tunisian stitch is like you've got a loop on your hook and you just go into each stitch to get a loop and just hold it on your hook. Like that. Just don't finish the stitch. All right, all right, baby, okay. I think I'm just at the point where it's gonna start getting difficult to have stitches on my hook. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you just yarn over and pull off one and then yarn over and pull off two. And there are a lot of different Tunisian stitches. I like the knit stitch. That means you go all the way through this to the back and you have the other side of the stitch. It's like you're going in the middle in between the legs of the stitches. I have another video if you need more um, practice with the knit stitch. And the last one you, you go over the two legs to see it better. Okay. So then you just yarn over and pull through one and then you yarn over and pull through two all the way. Now you can make this strap as wide or as thin as you like. I'm trying out a wide strap this time. Uh, it'll be more like a strap I can put over my wrist. This one I could put over my hand but um, they are kind of small and uh, I like this because I can just go like that and have a carabiner and have it hang from my you know backpack or a purse. This one might be a little more challenging to find a place to put the carabiner but it is wide enough to fit the carabiner or you could use a larger carabiner than the one I have. Or you could uh, just not use a carabiner. You could make it like a long uh, strap that you can put over your shoulder like a crossbody. I was also thinking this would make a great um, yarn sock to put yarn in that's starting to get kind of floppy and 
empty. Just stuff it in there and it can hold it. So you can make these in different diameters if you like. Okay, so I've finished the strap and I'm coming around to this side and I put some stitch markers on here just to see if it's long enough that I can fit my hand through and it looks like it is at the end of the Tunisian stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, they call it casting off. So you put your needle in as if you were doing the next row, but then you can do a single crochet or a slip stitch. I'm doing a single crochet. So this is how you're finishing the knit stitch. And then you make it a single crochet. And I think I'm going to Make sure you get both stitches on the edge. Okay, so that is finished. And we can do an edge along the strap, or we can just leave it as is because it's very stretchy. So I think I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to cut this, and then I'll connect it. So just pull your slip knot through and make a slip stitch. And now as you go along, you can crochet over the tail. And I'm just going to do some single crochets in each stitch just to finish that edge. And make sure you just go into the single crochet and not underneath of the stitch. Some stitches are harder than others. Now I'm going to just let that tail drop. I've crocheted over four stitches. That's enough. Here I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do a single crochet, another single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, go back into the legs of that single crochet in the middle, and I slip stitch, and there's a pico. It just creates a little interest on the edging. And then we continue on with our single crochets. It's not the most exciting edges of all time, but I like picots, so just put one little pico on the top. Okay, baby. So we're coming up on the next pico. Now this is the only time that I say like go around the whole, besides here, go around the whole um, stitch. I want you to go around the chain here as well. So here's one single crochet, here's two single crochets, chain three, one, two, three. Oh wait, this one I have to make the, the chain across. I think we did six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we skipped it. Just like that. Okay. And then we continue to chain. Uh, crochet, uh, single crochet. Please, Evan. I know you want a snack. I think I have uh, given him bad habits, and every time he wants one, I've been giving him a snack. And now he wants snacks all the time. And when I give them to him, 
it won't eat them all the time. Okay, so here we'll do single crochet. This is the middle single crochet. Then we do three chains. We go back into that middle single crochets. It's like the pants into the legs. Okay. And then we do another single crochet. So then continue the edging till we get to the other side. Now I try to make things that have the least amount of cut ends, but it doesn't always work out, unfortunately. Last single crochet, and then I'm going to do one single crochet here, and then I'm just going to go in the, the side of that first single crochet. And this is where I'm going to uh, cut and tie off. And I will sew it into there, so, or hide the end in there. So there's one little pico on either side. And this is where we're going to attach this piece over here. I'm going to have to attach it with a tapestry needle. So in order to set it up identical on the other side, I have to put in nine stitches. Again, make a slip knot. Pull it through and do a slip stitch through the slip knot that you made. You can push it down to the end. Now just go around and start making single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. You go into the top of this. There we go. We're just doing single crochets. Seven, eight, nine, nine stitches, perfect. I'm just gonna pull it through. I'm gonna leave myself a nice long tail. Because I'm gonna use that to sew these two together. So I'll get my needle ready and I'll meet you back. Okay, I want to just remind you when you're hiding your ends and that um, four chain circle, make sure that you crochet over your tail. I think I mentioned that. And then you go back and you anchor it after you've tightened it up by um, going around the circle. and closing up that gap where the, the knot always shows up, that first slip knot always makes a little gap. So you just kind of put the stitches over that, that slip knot.
and um, yeah, it's just as long as you've got it nice and tight and go back and forth a couple times, it should uh, it should hold it tight in the center. But if it if this slips, if this tail slips out, it will only open as wide as your chain circle is. So it's a good compromise. A lot of people like using the magic knot, but I don't like to rely on it completely. I like to use the chain. Okay, so here's the ridge. That's the outside. We're going to take this long tail. Okay, so here is the long tail that we're going to use to attach this to this. And I think I want to do it, yes, I want to do it this way so I see what I'm, I'm doing. So we go into the inside. Let me come out. We go into the inside, we come from the outside in. Go into the center, and you come in from the outside and you come out the center. You go into the center of the stitch, and you come in from the side and you come out the center. Yes, Evan, you have the prettiest meow. You do. You have the prettiest meow. This is our last stitch. Okay, now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do this just the opposite. Okay. So I go into this, this stitch, I come from the outside in and the inside out. I'm just whip, whipping it back. I wanted to have a nice, strong seam here. So I want to make sure that both sides are connected. It's not time for you to have any uh, food. It's not time, buddy. I have turned you into a monster, haven't I? Yeah, I've created a monster, a little snack monster. Yeah, I know you want a snack. Okay, so that's a good seam. I think it's a good strong seam. I like that. So now I'm just going to go in through here. I'm going to sew it from the back side. Or uh, hide the tail. I know. So this is done. This will fit a soda or a bottle of water. You can put it under your your arm like that, like a little strap. Or you could hang it on your purse if you wanted to. Um, I like these ridges. It helps, I think, hold it in place. So tell me what you think. If you'll try it, um, if you'll make some modifications, like I did here, this was my first 
prototype that I just whipped up in a conference room without a pattern using some sock yarn. This is 100% um, cotton. I think it'll work a little bit better. Um, I think the bottom is a nice sun wheel. So you, you tell me what you might do with this, this idea. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And look who's here. Hi, Evan. You ready for a snack? Oh, okay. I'll see you later. Please crochet your way today because it's the only time we have.